I'm Brian Cheffens. I'm the S.J. Berwin Professor of Corporate Law at the University of Cambridge. First I'm Brian. What I'm going to talk about is this long-standing debate in relation to corporate purpose. Uh, so what we're talking about here is whether, uh, what should be the objectives of directors and managers uh, when they manage companies. And there's two primarily contrasting views. One, which is that they should be managing it in the interests of the shareholders. The other view is that they should be looking at the question more broadly and that they should be taking into, can take into, and should be taking into account the interests of other corporate constituents, often referred to as stakeholders. Um, in terms of the debate, uh, the, usually the starting point, at least when you look at it from an American perspective, is a case called Dodge and Ford Motor Company. And in this case, uh, what happened was it was a dispute over dividend policy. Uh, and the Michigan court uh, in this 1919 decision uh, said that after Henry Ford indicated that, they, that Ford was setting up its policy in order to employ more workers, to reduce the price of cars, to employ more workers, uh, and was correspondingly reducing the dividend, that this was held to be improper by the Michigan court. And this is seen as a departure point for the view that, um, that directors and managers should be focusing on shareholders. Um, the next step, a more theoretical level, was between Adolph Burley and a a Merrick Dodd uh, in the early 1930s. Uh, traditionally, Burley's thought to have taken the shareholder primacy view. That's open to debate, especially his views evolved. And Dodd was uh, taking the more open textured, more stakeholder-oriented view. Then we then we're proceeding into the post-World War II period. Uh, and what you found there was the notion of managerialism was very influential in the United States, also existed in the UK, but the idea there was that what you would be having is that managers should be focusing not just on their shareholders, but that they should be looking at all constituents. This evolved and through, and then 1970, many say that a newspaper column by Milton Friedman was the beginning of the shareholder primacy era. era. That's not the case. In fact, the 1970s were when corporate social responsibility peaked. And it wasn't until the 1980s that with takeovers that shareholder primacy really kicked in because managers realized that in order to keep their jobs, they had to, um, uh, they had to maximize shareholder value. At that point, what happened is this got locked in through things like share options and just the idea that uh, managers should be focusing in on shareholders. The latest, and this sort of view was, it appeared to be of global significance. Indeed, uh, uh, Henry Hansman and Rainier Crackman in 2001 referred to the end of history, and this meant that shareholder primacy had won. It continued to kind of win in the first two decades of the 21st century, but you could see it was edging away with the Enron scandal, with the financial crisis. And then the, the chapter that I'm going to focus in on here is with um, COVID. Uh, there's been, an, and concerns about climate change, a sense that it is in fact what, th that the turn here is that managers should be focusing on broader issues and not just their shareholders. And so what I've sought to convey, as I've talked thus far, is that what you've had is a certain cyclical nature to this, that it's gone from shareholders to a managerial stakeholder perspective to shareholders, and then maybe we've gone to a managerial stakeholder perspective again. Now, a question to ask here when you're going in cycles like this is, well, why are we even debating this again? Is there anything that's really going to be different? The potential difference, and this is what the conference is about in large part, is that shareholders are arguably taking a voice, and it's the shareholders that are telling the managers, don't prioritize basic investor interests, that you need to take into account broader um, uh, global climate concerns, uh, inequality, um, race, and that kind of thing. And so the potential difference maker here is, is it going to be shareholders that are going to break the cycle by um, telling managers to think about things more broadly? That potentially could square the circle because what it is is that is acting in the shareholders' interest 
to pursue broader goals. What we don't know is, in fact, whether shareholders genuinely believe this. And it's been a good time for them to believe it, with share prices going up constantly with uh, COVID stimulus and a variety of other things. It's been good times. But we're moving into an era of high inflation, and, and arguably we could be moving into a bear market. In those circumstances, will, share, will investors stand by what they've been saying and continue to advocate to managers that you should be focusing in on broader goals and not simply on investment returns. So will, has the cycle been broken? We're just going to have to see.